Hello guys, and welcome to another ThoughtSpark video. When it comes to a point when our planet is no longer habitable for mankind, the question is, where will we go? What kind of planet should we move to? Specifically, what is the criteria for a new home for humanity to survive on? And could it be an exoplanet, or even an exomoon? Perhaps both. Let's find out. Number 1. Finding a planet in the habitable zone. The planet, in this case, would ideally have to have an average global temperature similar to that of Earth, which is around 14 or 15 degrees Celsius. We would ideally need somewhere around this temperature. Perhaps plus or minus 10 degrees would be acceptable. We could still survive in negative 20 degree weather in the winter and say something around 40 degrees Celsius in the summertime. As long as we are able to find or build some sort of shelter to protect us from the harsh temperatures, whether it be too cold or too hot, we should be just fine. And as long as the water on the planet remains liquid for at least some time of the year. Which brings us to number two, water. We need it to sustain life as we know it. Although, it would be best if we found a planet with plenty of drinkable fresh water, we could settle for salt water and make it drinkable by using a process called desalination. This is done by boiling salt water and collecting the vapor and condensing it back into a liquid in a separate reservoir. Number 3. Atmospheric Composition This is one of the most important aspects of finding Earth 2.0, because we don't want to continuously, permanently live in our spacesuits and have to keep manufacturing them as we produce offspring. Now say we find a planet similar to Earth. The minimum oxygen content required for us to function properly would be between 19 and 23.5%. This is recommended by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Between 15 and 19.5% oxygen couldn't efficiently be delivered to human cells, and you wouldn't be able to do any physical activity whatsoever. Mental functions would become impaired, and you would be too exhausted too quickly. Those with coronary, pulmonary, and circulatory problems would be at a greater risk of death. Oxygen is not the only thing we breathe. The majority of Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen at around 78%. So we could have our second home planet rich in nitrogen like Earth, but some other options can include helium or hydrogen or any sort of combination at 78%. All we would do is talk a little bit funny, but it would be safe to breathe like nitrogen on Earth. Moral of the story is, if we want to find Earth 2.0 with a sufficient enough atmosphere, we could survive at around 0.4 Earth's atmospheres. As long as it had some sort of inert gas with oxygen, it doesn't matter if it were nitrogen, helium, hydrogen, or any sort of combination, though nitrogen is best like it is here on Earth. We could even survive up to pressures of Something like, say, the moon on Titan, which is one and a half Earth atmospheres, but uh, there's also some studies that we could survive up to eight or nine pressures of Earth's atmosphere. The exact ratios of oxygen to nitrogen, helium, or hydrogen, or even neon or sulfur hexafluoride, or even argon, would depend ultimately on the atmospheric pressure of the planet. The higher the pressure, or bar, the lower the oxygen we would need to prevent oxygen toxicity. The lower the pressure, the more oxygen we would need to not asphyxiate. Number 4. A Tidally Locked Planet On a tidally locked planet, one side is permanently facing the sun, and the other side is facing away in complete darkness. Due to atmospheric convection, hot air rushing to the dark side and cold air rushing to the bright side would occur. Such a planet is capable of being habitable should it have the right atmosphere in the first place. Due to humanity's circadian rhythm, it would be quite a challenge if not impossible to adapt to a permanent day or a permanent night. Perhaps a happy medium solution to this would be to live along the circumference of the planet where day meets night, sort of a twilight zone or a light shadow. We could live and work on the light side and sleep on the dark side. This could also be an ideal area for habitable temperature. Though a tidally locked planet is perhaps less than ideal, but it's not impossible and can't be ruled out entirely. Number 5. A moon? Our moon, at 384,000 kilometers away from us, has played a huge role on the stability on Earth's tilt and seasons. Those two kind of go hand in hand. 
our entire ecosystem is built upon our moon. Many animals use the moon to navigate as a part of migration. It is on the fence right now, currently, on if life would be viable without the moon, but our moon certainly has played a role. The ocean food chain and predictable seasons, just to name a few examples. There's theories out there that say that life is both possible and impossible without the moon. I tend to think intelligent life such as ourselves could adapt and survive under conditions without a moon. However, I also think that less intelligent, more delicate life that is less resilient to adapt would suffer and die should we suddenly lose our lunar companion. Either way, it would be enough to lose the moon once just to realize how important it was. Number 6. A magnetic field, possibly just as important as an atmosphere. It is very important that we have some sort of protection from forms of radiation, cosmic rays and gamma rays. We could colonize caves and lava tubes. But if we really want an atmosphere, we would need the protection of a magnetic field to protect solar wind from stripping it. Here on Earth, our magnetic field protects our atmosphere and deflects a great amount of cosmic radiation, though you still need sunscreen for UV rays. If we found a planet that met all previous aspects I've covered so far, but had no magnetic field, we would pretty much need to ditch it, or be pretty sure that the planet has adequate means to protect us by way of lava tubes or caves, like the way the moon does. Yes, our atmosphere will slowly strip away over thousands of years, but we could, at a later time, put some sort of satellite into an L1 Lagrange point, that is a point between our star and our chosen planet, to remain there generating just enough magnetic field that it would, in theory, protect us from solar wind. But the problem with this is generating enough power to do such a thing, and on a big enough scale, just isn't quite feasible yet. Though NASA is investigating this. Humans leaving Earth to find a home with all six points presented in today's video would be a, such an amazing find. It could even answer the question of life on another planet. Now whether it's surviving the next thousand years, or even several billion years evading the day our star swallows our planet, us as intelligent life will always think and look for a way to live on. Eventually at some point we will need to live among the stars and onto another world, or even several of them. Thank you so much for watching this episode of ThoughtSpark. I want to thank all my subscribers and my viewers, and I encourage you to like this video, share it with somebody who might enjoy this content, and please subscribe. Hit me hit a milestone here of 100 subscribers. I'm a new channel here so I'm sort of seeking my way to grow. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for next time.